Hello, hello, and welcome to Hygiene Elevated Conversations and Innovations. And today we are joined by Miss Paige Blanton, um, a friend of mine who I've had the pleasure of knowing for 10 years-ish. Yeah, at least 10 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know you through your husband. Um, I didn't necessarily grow up, but our formative years, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Yes. And I had the pleasure of going to your wedding all the way up in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember you found out that I was practicing dental hygiene and you were just like, oh, it's my dream job. Yes. Yep. I don't think you had heard that many people say before <laughs> that being a dental hygienist was their dream job. Yeah. But you were one of the first. So um, that was my intro to you. But yeah. so tell us a little bit more about you, Paige. What is yeah. your journey? Because you're still in dental hygiene school. Yeah. So tell us what got you interested in dental hygiene and where you're at right now. Yeah. Um, well, I am in my third semester, so I have about a year left. Um, and what really got me into it, well, first of all, I'm the weirdo that just always loved going to the dentist. <laughs> I love getting my teeth cleaned. I love the sounds of the, the dental office, the smells, all of it. And so, um, but what really got me into it or made me decide that this was um, the path I wanted to take is actually when I was 16 years old, my parents, um, I had the, the best privilege to go to Liberia, Africa for one month. Um, and I stayed with a missionary family that my um, friends were friends with. And during my stay, I actually got to spend the day on a mercy ship that comes up to the port. And um, there was, you know, different medical fields, you know, on the boat helping out with um, whatever needed to be done. But I got to spend the day with a dentist. And I just remember thinking, like, wow, this is such a needed um field and I just like how cool would it be to do something that's so needed and um, that's really where it all started I was 16 I was like this is what I want to do here I am many years later finally doing it <laughs> I had, got a little distracted with a guy <laughs> but I'm married and have four kids so I, I don't regret it I think um, I have a better appreciation for school now and um yeah, I'm really, really excited to graduate in a year. I'm ready. <laughs> so. I'm sure you're ready to be done. I did yeah. not know that you went to Liberia yes. and work on a, a mercy ship. That's a yeah. really unique opportunity. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And my, my sister lives at an orphanage right now in Mexico, and they actually have a double clinic on, um, on the site. And so that's something I'm interested to in the future, hopefully. Um, to maybe just for a year or so, like move down there and work for them. So that would be really exciting. So that's always been in the back of my mind is, um, I don't know, maybe making it a missions opportunity. Um, but I mean, it's needed even in America. Like it's such a, a great field. So, yeah. It is. It is. Which sister is down there? Sorry. This is um, no, no, you're good. Um, Mia. Yes. You're young. My, She's not, she's like the one under me. So I have two sisters. She's the second oldest. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Paige, uh, you know, I love your story already. And <laughs> I always have kind of moved through life thinking it doesn't matter when you finish just as long as you do, yeah. you know, there's mm -hmm. no real time deadline on our yeah. own journey. Right. right. Um, it's not the I hear you correctly. You want to yes. move to Mexico? To practice hygiene. Um, well, <laughs> I don't know about long term, but I think okay. it would be a really cool opportunity. Yeah, James and I have talked about maybe just doing it for a year. My sister is down there right now. She is um, in the process of adopting four kids. And so she will be there for a while. So um, that is where the interest is just to maybe spend some time down there with them. But um, we're actually hoping to move back to New Mexico. <laughs> and, yeah, different. <laughs> Um, because that's where my husband's family is from. But um, yeah, the whole reason why we came back, to, I think one of the questions was, you know, about why I came back to Wisconsin. And as you guys know, it's a very intense program. And um, I just knew I needed the support of my family to do it. And so my family is from Wisconsin. And that's why I came back to have that help. So yeah. 
Oh, that's so good. Okay, yeah. Paige, I went yeah. through hygiene school. I started mm -hmm. when my daughter was just six months old. Wow. And yeah. It was nuts. Yeah. Not only was I trying to navigate like motherhood and yeah. pumping in between classes. <laughs> I can't imagine that. <laughs> I was never like a strong test taker. So I was like, I mean, not like, okay, let's just call it struggling. I was struggling yeah. academically, but enough mm -hmm. to like still understand what, you know what I mean? And yes, yeah. Um, I could not have done it without the support of my family. Never, yeah. ever, ever, ever. That is and I, yeah, I just remember, um, you know, I would go to school in the day. My husband mm -hmm. would work the night shift. Mm -hmm. There was a two hour overlap where neither one of us were home. So my mom or my grandmother would come over and mm -hmm. watch the baby for us. Yeah. And I remember some nights um, needing like t a test to study for. Mm -hmm. And I would call my grandma and I'd be like, Annie, can you come put the baby to bed for me? And she yeah. would, so I could sit in the dining room table, like hammering out my notes. And yeah. I couldn't have done it without the support either, Paige. Yeah, I could absolutely. not have done it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'm dying to know how old are your little ones? So I have four girls. Um, they are, let's see now, <laughs> eight, seven, four, and 10 months. So yes, all congratulations. Good. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah. the question, are you done? I, it depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we would like to have one more. <laughs> we'll <Okay>. see. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. So we've, we've had the opportunity to talk to quite a few hygienists, male and female about the parenting struggle um, mm -hmm. in hygiene school. Yes. Um, obviously, having that strong support system has been such a common thread between everybody's journey in through mm -hmm. hygiene school. Um, what other um, unique challenges and ways that you faced those challenges as being a parent? Um, could mm -hmm. you kind of give advice to other parents in, in the hygiene program or mm -hmm. students that are thinking about applying to the program, but maybe you're daunted by the idea? Yeah. Of a student and yeah, a mm -hmm. I would just say daunting is the right word. That's how I felt. I know it's what kept me from going for a while. I think I just thought I'm I've been out of school this long, and um, so I think fear kept me from that. So I would just say go for it. Um, and I, I too, I ne academically, it, I had to work a little harder for things, and so um, but I've learned that you don't have to be smart to to reach your goals. You just have to be determined, and so. I would start by saying go for it. But I think for me, it's just about being really wise with your time. So I will, if it means like waking up an hour early before my kids get up, um, I will do that. I have like an hour commute to school. And so I will play my audiobook or like lectures on the way to school and on the way back. And that, you know, that's a way I can use my time wisely. And I've, I've done a lot of studying when they go to bed. I brought no cards to soccer games <laughs> and I will say you struggle with mom guilt or dad guilt and you just have to remind yourself that it's a season that this is only for a time and um, you know your kids are watching you and I think it's a really cool thing to show them that you're working hard for something. Mm -hmm. um, I know my kids they might cry when I tell them I have to go back but I know that they see it and I know that they're proud too and so yeah, I would just say, don't be afraid, just go for it. And again, have that support system behind you. It sounds like you are incredibly smart with your time, Paige, like using that commute time, audiobooks, mm -hmm. uh, listening to podcasts. We actually um, have a school here in Utah that uses our podcast sometimes. Oh, that's awesome. As an assignment for their yeah. students. And I'm like, flattering. That is, yeah. It's nice having those... Um, resources available to help you with that. So yeah. we encourage those resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So you're one year away from graduation. Yeah. What do you plan on doing? I mean, we talked about possibly moving to Mexico, yeah. but after you graduate, are you going to practice in Wisconsin? Yeah, I think so. I've talked to some of my instructors and we had just talked about how, um, you know, licensure and how that can, you know, translate through the states. And I, I think she had mentioned that um, 
it might be wise for me to work two years that way. I don't know. In some states, they view that as, I don't know, you've worked long enough and they'll take you. Um, yeah. So I think I have to kind of look into that. Um, but I, I do see myself working here a little bit just to kind of, I don't know, I can't imagine graduating and then moving immediately. That just sounds like a lot. So um, I do think I'll I'll probably work here a couple of years and then we'll kind of see what what's next. So, yeah. I'm thinking back to my own like hygiene school experience mm -hmm. and Paige, it was so hard for me to do group projects um, because oh man, <laughs> I, I had to get home to a baby. <laughs> like it yeah. was ridiculously hard. So yeah. I just remember like really struggling on that as as an aspect of its own. Like I wanted to do yeah. that group project on school time during our lunch break. Yeah. And you know, the other classmates were more like, Oh, let's do it later tonight. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah. 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 I know. Have you run into that too? Yeah. There's definitely, uh, even like this weekend, they were like, let's get together. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay. <laughs> Can I bring my kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think for me too, uh, thankfully, I think a lot of the girls do like to try to get stuff done while we are at school. Um, and like I said, I have the best support system. My husband has been amazing and he manages a, a Starbucks. So he is able to um, kind of move around his hours if I need extra time to stay at school. And then my mom actually just retired this past year. She was a, a teacher. And so, and I know not everyone has that. So I know that I'm lucky, um, but she's been also just incredible. She, whenever I need to drop them off, I can bring them by her. So I really couldn't have done this without her. Aww. Yeah. It's amazing. What yeah. is your class size? Um, there is 15 of us. Hopefully, oh. hopefully we make it. <laughs> the, se the senior class are down to 12 and that just scares me every day. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it won't be me. I'll be failing before I quit. So, <laughs> you know what? I wanted to like throw in the towel after the first semester. Yes. And I yeah. was like, this is way harder. I'm like not yeah. smart enough for this. I I can barely like stay afloat in yeah. all these roles I'm trying to do. Yeah. And it was my husband who was like, absolutely not. Like, yeah. You're, <laughs> Ten thousand dollars invested into yeah, this program. Right? You're going this to far, and I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> so, you need that little push. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. And um, you know, there was a girl who started the program with me, and we had so many parallels in our life. She and I were the exact same age. Mm -hmm. Our daughters were born on like the exact same day. Yeah. Same age, everything. Mm -hmm. And so we were both these moms and she, she quit after the first semester and it really like scared me. Like, Oh yeah. my gosh. Like if she yeah. Yeah. doesn't think she can do it, like who am I thinking I can, you know? Right. And, um, I don't know if her experience like got in my head a little bit when yeah. I was kind of struggling. So yeah. I see your fear with like, I hope we all make it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I always tell them, you know, I, you know, you, you we're all very close, but, there's a few of us that we get together a lot just because we we all drive an hour and I always tell them like, you guys better not leave me. <laughs> We're in this together. We're going to struggle <laughs> together. But that's really helpful is knowing you're not alone that, you know, and there is two other moms in my program and one is pregnant right now. And I'm just like, I can't imagine. So, um, yeah, it's good to know that, you know, and, and to think about the people that have gone before me, you guys, you you know the struggle, but you're there. You've done it. And um, I just have to remind myself that I will get there too. And yeah, yeah. You will totally get there, Paige, yeah. 100%. <laughs> and yes. be stronger for it. Yeah, right. I know it's really building my character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one way to say it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So you're thinking about moving to New Mexico um, back with um, your husband's family. Yeah. Um, what are some of the challenges that you are kind of anticipating moving from Wisconsin to New Mexico for practice? Yeah, I think, like I said, just knowing how that license is going to 
go over. I don't know. I, I still have yet to look into it. I, again, I'm just taking this one day at a time. That's tomorrow's worry. <laughs> but I think that is something I have to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, just also moving. To, I mean, I we did live there the first year we were married, but I still am not very used to it there. And um, yeah, it'll just be, you know, a whole thing, even just moving and being away from my family after all this. So, but I'm excited. I think it'll be really good. It, it is topographically incredibly different from Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm sure. <laughs> I think so as I've had my hygiene license in New Mexico for almost 16 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember getting my license before the digital age, which New Mexico is notoriously behind the times on so many things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I had to try to get a copy of my physical license because it, I lost it in the move and mm -hmm. I needed it for tax purposes. Yeah. I reached out to um, our licensure department and I just was thinking, oh, this is going to be like Utah where I can just email and say, hey, can I get a copy of my license? Yeah. And they respond within five minutes and say, no problem. Here it is. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> um, it's not the case. Yeah. Um, it's good to know. <laughs> yeah, it was like jumping through hoops like crazy. Like, uh, well, we need a cashier's check and a certified letter requesting it. And then we'll get it to you in about two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I never, I never got my license there because it was the whole thing. So I was like, I'm going to keep my Wisconsin one. <laughs> uh, yeah. A cashier's check? That's what's got me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was 15 years ago. This was yeah. in 2021. <laughs> like, yeah. was this year. Or well, not this year. This millennium. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And when I was applying for to get my license, I had all, all my paperwork turned in and everything. Licenses were only approved when the board got together three times a year. So if you did not get all your yeah. stuff in and you didn't get your jurisprudence done and passed, yeah, you wait. Yeah, it's like who does that? So anyway, right, yeah. things are a little better now, Paige. But I, I would say New Mexico is a little bit more progressive on what hygienists can do okay. than a lot of other states. So okay. local anesthesia, um, you can do. There's General supervision, direct supervision, um, indirect supervision, or indirect supervision. Mm -hmm. So basically, depending on what your office is, but like I have my general supervision license. Like my doctor, he can be gone out of the country on missions trips, and he intends that we are carrying on business as if he was there, and that we're going to keep his schedule full for him. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we can do SRP while he's gone. Like we have his blessing. Mm, okay. Um, That's not the case in Utah. It's it's. Yeah very gray area here. And okay. as you know, Texas, some of those Southern states, mm -hmm. hygienists are barely able to start doing infiltrations, much less nerve blocks. So right. yeah. kind of weird. And also yeah. hygienists can own a practice mm -hmm. in Mexico, mm -hmm. which is very forward. And that's been the way it has been since I graduated. I, I've known of that. So mm -hmm. it was weird moving from such a backward state yeah. to a forward state where Dentistry is a little bit more backwards. So it yeah. was weird. Yeah. That was weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. We are, we're um, next semester is when we start learning anesthesia. And so I was wondering, cause I, I think I actually Googled it. Like, will I be able to do this in New Mexico? <laughs> so that's good to know. 100%. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Awesome. Let's see, Paige, can you share with us a memorial, um, sorry, a memorable experience <laughs> or lesson you've learned during your time in dental hygiene school? Yeah, um, well, this isn't really a lesson, but this is definitely a memory. <laughs> and this actually just happened two weeks ago. But um, we have a lady named Linda, and she is like our administrative part of our program. And she's amazing. She set up our um, like the office that we have a bunch of computers and we just a lot of us go in there to study or eat lunch or prepare for clinic and so um yeah one day me and one of my classmates her name is grace um we're in there preparing for clinic and she was very quiet and she goes Paige I have to tell you something and I'm like oh boy here we go <laughs> and she's like I've been talking to this guy on tinder and apparently he is one of our patients here at the school and he's being seen by one of the seniors right now and he wants to see me. And I was like, 
Oh my goodness. Like, I'm just thinking, I'm glad that I'm not in this part of my life anymore. This sounds really stressful, but you do you girl. And um, so anyway, we're just laughing about it. Yeah. Like, his x-rays like I literally okay. said I was like go look if he has gum disease or something <laughs> and um anyway so we're just talking and all of a sudden we see the senior come in with this guy in Linda's office and he's standing there and it appears like he has no pants on <laughs> he just has a shirt and tennis shoes and we're like we're just like dumbfounded we're like what is going on right now um, and it's really unfortunate because he's actually a cute guy. He looks like that um, one guy from Aquaman, Jason Momoa, I think is how you say oh. his name. Yeah, yeah he's, he's cute. And he he asks her for a hug and she's just like, I'm not hugging you. Why did you track me down at school? And so he got completely denied. But we <laughs> he ends up walking away and we go into clinic and we're like, what was that? We found out he did have pants on. They were just like very short biker shorts. <laughs> But he had been talking to all of the, our instructors, like asking about Grace, and she was just mortified. She was like, I can't believe everyone knows I'm on Tinder. <laughs> That's what she cared about. <laughs> so that was like, I will never forget that. I am like, I don't know if she ever went on a date with him. I think the whole him not looking like he wore pants kind of sealed the deal for her. But Thankfully, nothing crazy like that happened to me, but I got to experience that. So there's some weird patients we have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's one we haven't heard before. We haven't yeah. heard of using Tinder <laughs> to get patients. Yeah. I mean, right. that's how Matt who got me in his chair was on LinkedIn. So okay. a little different. Yeah. But yes. That's Tinder funny. is the new way to get patients. Who I that? know, right? <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I, I think the lesson there is first impressions are critical. Um, yeah. <laughs> chances. Just uh, that. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> Amanda, what's one of your memories from school? Okay. <clears throat> this is a clinic for sure. So I had a patient who considered herself a refugee from Florida hurricanes. And she was passed down. She wasn't even passed down from my big sister. Like we had a big sister program. Okay. Um, she was passed down from somebody else's big sister. That should have been the first clue. <laughs> um, and so uh, it was my, I want to say her name was Erica, my classmate. I think it was Erica. Yeah, it was Erica. Um, she's like, I just want you to read read what my big sister wrote before you see this patient because it sounds crazy. And so in the the note, because this is before digital, um, she wrote down what she would do to prepare to get through the appointment with this patient. And it was have the patient rinse with Listerine, orange solvent in your mask, chew gum, <laughs> don't eat before the appointment. <laughs> so... <Nice. laughs> like, I have like a pretty strong stomach. Like it takes a lot to gross me out. So this lady, yeah. super nice. You could just tell like hygiene was not great. Yeah. She had Listerine in her mouth for like all of two seconds. Um, so you should get her in the chair and her teeth just look like cauliflowers. Oh, wow. Just covered in plaque. It wasn't calculus. It was mm -hmm. just plaque. Mm -hmm. Like a toothbrush had never touched her mouth. Yeah. And I mean, the gum, I just remember like, you know, as a student, like all this is new, right? And you're just like watching this plaque fly off and the gum tissue just flopping in the wind of this yeah. gin. And just every three months we went through this and the smell was just so bad. Like I've never smelled that smell again mm -hmm. in my 14, 16 years as a hygienist. Yeah. And I mean, oral hygiene just it it was lost on her like i i was yeah. never successful with that patient but yeah um, yeah and so anytime a patient asks me you know the, they always ask am i the worst you've ever seen i'm like no no <laughs> it would back take a lot <laughs> I can pull that one that yeah. i don't i had to coat my mask in orange solvent in years yeah. so yeah what about yeah, you Jeffrey? <laughs> gosh you know, um, I once had a patient lick my fingers in the clinic. Oh, nice. <laughs> and that was one of the creepiest, oh. <laughs> creepiest moments. That is. 
<laughs> um, and I remember telling my husband about it. And so now when he comes and get his teeth cleaned, he'll lick my fingers sometimes <laughs> just to like <laughs> make me laugh. PTSD. <laughs> Can you yeah. I want this to get sexual? Can you show us how <laughs> you lick your fingers? Because there's no, I mean, I can't do it because that'll be so weird on camera. But just imagine <laughs> you're in there with like your fulcrum, right? And your mirror and just the tongue right along your finger. And you're just like, oh. was it an accident? <laughs> no, it really it felt on purpose. Okay, that's worse. <laughs> Oh, that is oh, fun, Chase. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only happened that one time, but never will forget that. Did oh you a very strong note in all caps of like, <laughs> do not see this patient licked my ears. Oh, that's funny. That's mm -hmm. gross. I don't think we had any creepy guys like that. I don't remember those anyway. <laughs> Oh well. Oh, and and I remember seeing um like meth mouth for the very first time in person mm -hmm. as a student, and that just rocked my world. I mm -hmm. was just stunned. Like yeah, yeah. Like you know when it, like you see your car accident, right? You just can't stop looking. Like I yeah. was just like, what is yeah. this? Like, <laughs> did like, they have hey. everyone come look? I feel like that'd be like a teaching moment. <laughs> I don't remember. We may have like just our little tiny club, you know, our little group yeah. in clinic because um, yeah. my program had 60 students. So we had oh, just wow. like little, little groups working together in the clinic. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure some of them may have looked at it, but I was just shocked. Like you see pictures on TV or mm -hmm. like online and you're like, yeah, okay. But then when you see it in real life, real life. and you yeah. all of a sudden when it's in real life, you just see like the pain and the like yeah the react you like it just felt more real way more real when it was in your chair yeah hmm. um but he said he didn't do drugs he went on to tell me it was from mountain dew but i knew better okay yeah. so in your time in hygiene school you know obviously you're exposed to so many things that you have never even thought of before. Mm -hmm. um, but just in the like intaking of all of the information that you're learning, especially with the, the context of being on a missions trip and having the, the mercy ship experience, what mm -hmm. are some pressing issues that you kind of see facing the dental hygiene profession today in yeah. from perspective as a student? Yeah. Um, it's funny because I think going into this field, I really didn't know that <laughs> of these things that hyge hygienists faced. And <laughs> actually last semester, I, I wrote a whole paper on it and I could go into so many things down to, you know, just like, you know, hygienists feeling like they don't have enough time to do their cleanings or, you know, the intricate movements and the back pain that comes with that. But I think the one that I've experienced already just I mean this is my first um, semester seeing not my classmates this is my first semester seeing real patients is just actually getting buy-in from your patients a lot of these people just look at us like we're this fluff and buff hygienist that they just come in two times a year just quick polish my teeth and I'll be on my way and you know some I mean my patient last last week, couldn't believe she even had gingivitis. She's like, no one's ever told me this. And it's hard when you have someone with bone loss and you're trying to just keep them, you know, stable. And you know that you need to see them three, four times a year, but their insurance only covers it two times. So now they're in their head going, yeah, you just want my money. And you're like, no, I'm just trying to be, you know, an honest professional clinician and I'm telling you what you need. And I think that's, going to be a struggle. I think going out and knowing what I know and how, how this is beyond your mouth, this is a systemic thing. You know, as soon as patients don't know, you know, as soon as you have an ulceration in your mouth, now this bacteria is going into your bloodstream and this can be a problem within your whole body now. And they just don't know that. And so, and we have a very short window of time to really get this you know, in their head. And this is, this is not just us. This is a partnership. This is, you know, we only can do so much in the chair. 
But if they're not going home and disrupting that bacteria at home, you know, we only can do so much. And so I think for me, I'm just realizing that, you know, a lot of our battle is, is with our patients. <laughs> And maybe even the, you know, the front office people that might not fully understand who are like, you know, trying to get as many people in the, in the chair as possible. And they don't understand the importance of what we do. And so, yeah, I think I'm already just seeing that. Um, yeah. I think Joffrey's probably chomping at the bits to answer that and tell you dental is sales. Dental yeah. is sales. It is. It's, well, it is that's actually not what I was thinking, Amanda. I was thinking um, the insurance companies are really the bad guys here. Yeah. And yes, so I was going to say, us hey, welcome to the club. It's the fight yeah. against insurance companies. Yeah, it's so true because they, they think, well, if we needed that, why wouldn't they cover that? And um, I, I was just talking to my instructor and she said, you know, the reason why we ha we do cleanings every six months no one sat around and tried, you know, no professionals sat around and tried to come up with this number. It was actually just the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going off of. We're being run by what the insurance companies think we need. Information from the 60s. Yes. And reimbursement yes. from the 60s. Yes. yes. It has it. We have, I'm like, can we sit down again? We might need a little refreshment here, guys. So yeah, it's so true. They set us up for failure because now who's the one answering it's us it's the front desk that has to answer for it and pa patients don't want to pay out of pocket they don't so yeah it's and i get it i would be the it would be hard but you just have to to let them know the importance of it you know so that's really the key of it Paige. you'll just you know you're going to graduate and it'll be you just educate your patients and let them make yeah. their own choice yeah that's um, what it is we had Edgar on here and he said something that's kind of just resonated with me yeah. and I'm going to share it with you because it's such great advice, but he said, yeah. you know, there's a difference between observing your patient and like assessing their needs and their treatment recommendations. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to absorbing your patient and taking mm -hmm. on, taking in their energy and like their, yeah their anger like if, when you're feeling what they're feeling like it's just going to wear you down but when you yeah. can stay in that professional mode and yeah. just be observing and saying what they need and if and um gosh edgar just turned on a little light bulb for me when he said yeah, that yeah um, that's wise yeah hmm. i had my first peer-to-peer -peer, um fight i guess today <laughs> with, with a dentist oh, um, nice. <laughs> Yeah, so I had this patient, um, and I could see it, it was borderline, but with the intraorals, like we use an AI software, there was bone loss present on in all four quads. We did all four quads. There was a ton of stain, mm -hmm. um, but there was supra and subgingival calculus. Mm -hmm. um, they approved the lower arch. No, yes, they approved the lower arch. They denied the upper arch. Um, which made no sense because it was pretty pretty much a mirror what the top had going mm -hmm. on the bottom had going on mm -hmm. and so the story like we resubmitted it um, and they they approved the bottom they denied the top I think then my office manager put in for a peer to peer and she called today and we were like like why have you denied this but not that one and yeah. she said well. Out, for consistency sake, we honestly shouldn't have approved the lower. We should have only, we should have denied all of it. So for consistency sake, we will cover both arches. Um, and so we were like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Using AI, AI is telling us, which we know it's it's not 100%, but if right. I think there's bone loss, AI thinks there, there's bone loss. That's two opinions that think there's bone loss. Yeah. Um, there's clinical calculus, um, intraoral images, plenty of calculus in there. Um, mm -hmm. and there's some attachment loss as well. And so she was like, well, just because there's calculus, just because there's pocketing and there's not significant bone loss, it, it doesn't warrant scaling and root planing. And she started mm -hmm. talking about pseudo pockets and I'm like, all three are present. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not like all three of those things are present. So yeah. We, I was like holding my tongue because I was like, I don't want her to like, you know, turn yeah. it around 
and do something because yeah. I don't want my patient to have to pay. Yeah. Excuse me for that calculator or for the, the scaling. Yeah. But I'm just like, nothing that you're saying is consistent. Yeah. And makes sense. Right. So that was my first one ever. So I didn't know what to expect, but yeah, I, ha I have a very, very low opinion of insurance companies. So yeah. Yeah. But I had a really good experience with a peer to peer once. Did you? And the claim was getting denied over and over and we, we kept resubmitting it and I'd write <laughs> letters to them. I did all this stuff. And mm. finally we got on the phone together and, um, the guy was like, well, what's going on? And I'm like, well, you guys keep denying the, the claim. It's very clear they have perio. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, what are the probe depths? I'm like, six, seven, eight. And he was oh. like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's perio. Sorry about that. And just like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, that's nice. <laughs> it was like a 20 second call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, no, this this one wasn't, but mm, interesting. I, I'm glad we won I, for my yeah. patient. We won, right. but the answer is really what frustrated me. So yeah, but well, do you know sometimes we have to actually pay the insurance company to submit the request for the peer to peer? Oh, really? Wow. Uh huh. So, yeah, some of them have a fee to do that. Oh. Such a pleasure doing business. I, I know, know right? just like the cherry on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I will say uh, you're right on the buy in page, and you'll learn to kind of speak your patient's language. Like, you just yeah. you learn, okay, this is what I, they need to, to see mm -hmm. to buy in, this is what they need to hear. Uh, yeah. One time I had a patient, I used the term, well, if you want to chew meat for the rest of your life, you should probably start investing in your teeth. And apparently that was the right thing to say. Cause she's like, I love steak. I yeah. want to eat for the rest of my life. And right. so she took her hygiene very serious after that. Yeah. You never know what the right thing is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, don't yeah. be afraid to have those conversations and yeah. you'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. And you're always going to have a no here and there. That doesn't mean you yeah. failed. Right. Yep. It's a learning yep. opportunity. Yeah. All right, Paige, I'm going to turn the corner here now. I want to ask you, um, how do you envision the role of dental hygienists evolving in the future, especially yeah. in light of like technology advances and changes in healthcare? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think even just you brought up AI today, I actually had to just look like I researched a little bit this week, like what, what am I, you know, stepping into? What do I have to look forward to? And I think a lot of people worry, like, well, I still have my job. <laughs> and I don't think we're getting to that point. I think, you know, there's clinical um, diagnosis is crucial. And this is just really great tools to have. Like you said, you know, you looked clinically and saw it and AI saw the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've learned that they've, um, that AI has been helping with the diagnosis of, of x-rays and stuff. And I think that's really cool. And yeah, I think it's just we're in a field that's going to be always evolving. And I think it's just important that we don't stay stuck in our ways, that we're going to always be students of our profession and know that there's always something to learn. And I think that's for every profession, really. But um, yeah. I'm excited to see. I think even in my, you know, at the time that that I'll be doing this, I think I'm going to see and I'm sure you've seen cool advances already. So. Yeah, even the 3D printing, I mean, that's not like super new or that's like still pretty new. And yeah, it's just cool to see all that stuff. So it is always interesting to like hear of a technology that's just being introduced into the general public and then yeah. seeing it adapted into your, yeah. your, your practice. And yeah. like, I remember the 3D printing. I never thought 3D printing would be yeah. adapted to dental. Right. AI, yeah would never have expected AI to be adapted, right. but I, yeah, I love having overjet. Like I use that almost 100%, probably 95% of the time with mm -hmm. patients. I have that up so they can see it. Um, yeah, that's cool. we're not just like thinking that I'm doing something I'm like, this is AI. It's unbiased. Yeah. It's yeah right. Yeah. It's not trying oh. to get your money. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. doesn't work for insurance. It doesn't work for me. It's just here. It's its yeah. own so yeah, what cool. about have you guys learned um gbt the biofilm 
Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. If I don't know, I'm guessing no. I think like not even the majority of hygienists are really know, but I would say that's like one of the big things for hygienists right now is um, mm -hmm. guided biofilm therapy. Is that correct? Is that the? Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah. basically, I don't want to say power washing. That is like really doing it a disservice. But yeah, right. My husband freaked me out. Maybe <laughs> 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 don't like mm -hmm. a creeper. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm thinking with AI, I saw online that like, there are some places where you can get your like lash extensions done by AI. Oh, wow. Ew. I know, but <laughs> if they could do that with AI, um, yeah. it'd be kind of cool to see them try to clean some teeth. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking like using some AI to hit all those like hard to reach spots, like um, distal of 15 or if they have 16. <laughs> And you're yeah. trying to like laser over there and it's so oh. hard to navigate just to let AI do that. So you're not like putting yourself in an awkward position. <laughs> that would be really nice. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, like lingual of uh, 30 or 31, they don't have to like move their head or you don't have to swivel weird. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want it to totally replace me, but I could see it helping me out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I feel like you've probably thought about this. What other piece of advice, not advice, sorry, I'm like skipping ahead. What piece of technology do you wish existed in dentistry that so far does not exist? Or even Paige, if you've thought of it. Oh. I'm gonna, I'll come back to me on that one. I'm going to think about that. Okay. I don't have anything. I, I just have one. No. no. Something that you wish would exist? Yeah. I don't know, Amanda. Don't know. You got yeah. me stumped on that. <laughs> I know. Maybe that could be like a new question that we ask everybody. Uh, <laughs> I'll put a poll on this one on YouTube. Let's yeah. see what answers anyone question. else has. Yeah. Um, okay. So moving along. So what are some key skills or qualities that you believe are essential for success in the field of dental hygiene? Yeah, I think the number one, and this is also how we can get by and with our patients is having empathy. I think that's key in this profession because, you know, there, a lot of people don't like the dentist. A lot of people don't want to come and it might be out of fear or anxiety or um, embarrassment of letting their oral hygiene go for too long. And um, I think we just need to be understanding. I, re I remember one of my instructors told this story of this mom that came in and her, her baby had rampant caries from, um, it was baby bottle caries. And mm -hmm. this was a single mom who was living in an apartment and she wasn't getting any sleep. And the, the people around her were complaining of her baby crying all night. And the only way she could get the baby to sleep is by giving it the bottle. And obviously we know that's not ideal, but this is, we have to remember that this is, this is real life. These are people's real problems. Um, and so I think for me, I've just realized that people are going to be more open to listen to you when they know that you're, that you actually care, that this is, um, yeah, that they're a real person. And so I would say empathy would be my number one. And then two, just being really wise with your time during clinic. Um, I thought I was organized. Nope. <laughs> At clinic made me realize I need to prepare an hour ahead of time. I could have, I need to think three steps ahead before I'm even there. And um, even just one of, the, one of my instructors told me this and now I do it. Um, I will, before I set the patient back to probe, I will tell them, you know, anything above, you know, one through three is healthy. Anything above that shows, you know, the start of possibly gum disease. And so when I lay them back, I'll read the numbers out loud. And if, if they're hearing, you know, four is fives, six is, half the work is already done for me. They're already mm -hmm. thinking as they're laying back, oh boy, I, there's a problem going on. I'm in trouble. So when I sit them back up, they're already ready to listen to me. I don't have to lay my groundwork anymore. It's already done. Now we can be like, what are we going to do about this? And so it's all about being creative. It really is with your time. And um, like you said, everyone is different. I'm realizing 
I could say one thing to someone and it's clicking and then the other person it's going over their head. And so you really do have to read your audience. And I think that's a skill for sure. So, and I'm learning that. So, yeah. It's, it's definitely a lifetime skill, but I think you said it right the first time, like you've got to meet the patient where they're at. Everybody's right. at a different place in their, in life, but in their health journey where yeah. they're at. So when you have that empathy and you're not like coming at somebody of like, mm -hmm. how could you give your baby that bottle? Like, right. hello, you, like walk a mile in her shoes, like see where she's yeah. at, yeah. you know, yeah. having that empathy of like, you, you don't know what was going yeah. on, but she's right. here. Let's help yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. That, that's always well received with patients, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paige, I think you're spot on with empathy. Um, we're telling people they have a disease. Yeah. <laughs> Be empathetic of that. Yeah, right. People don't I mean, love hearing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely personal and sensitive. And it is. Yeah. You know, and you're going to run into the problem page where you're seeing people saying to you, like, well, I didn't have this last time. I Everything know. was fine yeah. last time. Well, they didn't tell me that last time. <laughs> yeah. And you just have to, you know, you know, the body changes. People develop right. things. And yeah. Yep. yeah, it's funny. I am the least confrontational person ever. If you ask anyone in my family, I didn't know I was entering such a confrontational <laughs> profession. <laughs> I was like, oh no, <laughs> did I make a mistake? But really it is just all about being truthful, but with grace. And it's all about how you say it. And you can say the hard things, you know, in a professional way. And that also I am learning. So yeah. Very true. Okay. So I watched this YouTube video. I, I don't remember who it even was, but they were saying like, if you want people to like go along with your recommendations, match their energy. And the guy in the video was saying like, if they are being um, very short with you, be very short right back to them. And mm -hmm. they, and it almost sounded backwards because I'm like, I would never be short with somebody. I'm like, right. that's just not me. Right. Um, but I had a lady come in and she was being so short with me. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm talking like two, three sentences, two, three words at a time, kind of short. Yeah. And she needed it more than a profi, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just telling her like the facts, just one sentence. And like, she was like, okay, can you do it right now? And I'm like, holy moly, that worked. <laughs> I, yeah. I haven't tried it since, just the one, but I was still yeah. very shocked that it yeah. worked. And then, you know, we did the right side and she came back in for the left. And when she came back in the left, she was like a totally different person. She was yeah. like, more chatty. She was yeah. a lot nicer. And I'm like, Oh, I like yeah. this version of you. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's good advice. I mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. There is something about that second time the patient comes back to see you, especially if it's SRP. Like, I feel like that's, they either feel more comfortable or they just hate mm. you more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> They're funny, but yeah. yeah, it is an interesting dynamic how the, it's a, Sometimes it's a different person, but it is a different dynamic, that second appointment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you think about it, if you meet somebody and you diagnose them and you don't have time to start treatment and then they come mm -hmm. back maybe the next week and then they come back maybe the next week, like you've seen this person three times. You guys are basically dating right now. Like <laughs> yeah. you're spending a yeah. lot of time together in that operatory. Like yeah. I hope they're feeling a little bit more comfortable. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time I start a new job, I always feel like it's like uh, six months of first dates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say it is when you start that first job or if you're working two jobs, like it's emotionally exhausting because you're just yeah. getting to know dating six, yeah. six months of new patients. Yeah. You no, know, eight to however many people you're seeing a day. Yeah. It, Exhausting. You're just like, I just want to see another patient that I've seen before. Like yeah. I'm done with you. Yeah. I, I right. want to yeah. about. Yeah. So. yeah. But I bet that's rewarding having those long-term patients that you, you know, you start to become friends with them. I can see that. And that's, it's really cool. Yeah. It is. I definitely think that's the rewarding part of, of my love celebrating yeah. healthy gums. I am yeah. like, your gums look so good. Like it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. my favorite. That's cool. Yeah. I'm excited for that. 
All right, Paige. Um, so you kind of gave us some advice for new parents or parents thinking about going to back to school. Um, but in general, what kind of words of encouragement would you have for anybody listening to this podcast that's about to finish hygiene school? Yeah, yeah, I would just say, take it one day at a time. I think at first, I just, it's easy to get overwhelmed looking at the big picture. And um, like I said, you you just got to put your head down and you got to, I, I made myself a master list of what's due this semester, but then I've only focused it on a week at a time or in sometimes day by day because um, yeah, hygiene school is not for the faint of heart. It's, it takes a lot of your time. It takes discipline. You're going to have to say no to a lot of things your friends invite you to. <laughs> um, you might have to bring your note cards to a soccer game. It's like, it's going to take sacrifice. And so um, I think I would also just say it, you know, make sure that this isn't everything. Um, it feels like it because it's consuming all your time, but you still have a life outside of this. Make sure you make time for yourself, for your mental health, um, go on walks, whatever brings you joy. I would just, and this is a good reminder to myself, I'm on spring break right now <laughs> and I'm letting myself take naps <laughs> um, and I need it. So, and that's important because yeah, it, the only way you're going to make it through hygiene school is by also just taking care of yourself. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Joffrey can definitely speak to that. You know, yes. And I just like, again, Paige, solid advice. But, but mm. even like keeping that same energy with you post-graduation. Mm. Um, when you yeah. start doing the grind and seeing all these patients every day, like it's equally as important to still take care of yourself. And yeah, when, I believe that. when we stop doing that, I think that's when most hygienists experience the burnout. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, there's this, the, I really like this phrase. We give the best versions of ourselves to the people who mean the least, mm. you know, we're like the best, yeah. best Jeffrey hygienist all day long. Yeah. And then I could come home and be like the grumpiest Joffrey mom. Like, <laughs> yeah, So it really yeah. like, and that's not fair. Like uh, my kids deserved a better version yeah. of me. Right. than my patients. So yeah. I try really hard to mm. be the best version of myself all the time, but yeah. also keeping it, but not um, expelling all my energy in clinic. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like, and that's hard to like actually explain, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to balance my energy output throughout yeah. the day differently than I used to. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. All right. Um, so the last two questions, Paige, are questions that we ask everybody that comes onto the show. Um, so you're still in hygiene school, so we're going to change them up just a little bit. But what piece of advice do you wish you could go back and give yourself as a new hygiene student? Mm, yeah, I think this kind of goes with the last thing I answered, just to not take it so seriously. I think, I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys can relate to this, but all of me and my classmates, we always, we always talk about how we're such perfectionists, even like down to our homes. <laughs> and um, it can be hard to stick something up out when you're not good at it right away. And so I think I would just go back and be like, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. You're not going to be good at it right away. And um, it really has built character in me because in the past, if if I wasn't good at something right away, I would, I would usually just quit it. <laughs> and, but I put too much into this one to quit this one. So, um, but just to look back and see how far I've come, I'm like, I've already gone this far and I only have this much more to go. Like I'm doing it. And so, yeah, just again, take it one day at a time. I would just tell myself not to, to focus so much long, you know, like at the end, just to, to one day at a time focus on what I got to get done that day. So, yeah. All right, Paige, last question here. Yeah. What is something that you're looking forward to learning in school that you have not learned yet? Yeah, kind of scared saying this one. <laughs> but I think for me, I feel like I want to learn more about fluoride, which is kind of funny because it feels like a big one for hygiene school. And I feel like we haven't touched on it, you know, 
a lot late, but I'm hoping um, I start karyology in like a couple weeks. It's anyway, I'm hoping we'll touch on it in, in that class. But I think for me, um, I've, I've already seen what the benefits of fluoride are for, especially with people that are more prone to caries. Um, but also on the flip side, I'm, I like more natural products in my home. Um, I tend to be more holistic in my views. And so I understand people that have different views um, on fluoride use. And so I think I just want to be, have more, I don't know, rounded knowledge of it. Yeah, on both sides. I want to be understanding of the person that doesn't want it. I want to know why, why we should recommend it. And so, and I know this is like a very touchy topic for some people. And so um, I think I just, and I know I'm going to be asked about it and I just don't feel like I'm completely informed about it yet. I don't even know how I completely feel about it yet. Um, so I think that's what I'm looking forward to learning and I'm hopefully will be soon. So, yeah. Oh, you'll be so sick of talking about fluoride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Ooh, yeah. but when you get there, we can have a whole conversation on fluoride. We can I talk about know. the different percentages in different products. We can talk yeah. about alternatives. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, we man, also, I would love to know. We have some pretty great podcasts, actually, um, on some alternatives. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dr. James, it's more toothpaste. It's not a in in office product to be used, yeah. but alternatives. Yeah. So I'm I'm more on the holistic side of things. Yeah. Um, not that Joffrey isn't, but she definitely yeah. she is camp fluoride for sure. So yeah, yeah, it's you know, cool. I'm to a little see more mainstream. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's great because I think there's there's reasons on both sides, and that's yeah, I really yeah. would love to hear both ends. So yeah, I'll have to check out those podcasts. I'm very curious. So yeah, Paige, I wish you the best of luck. Please you tell so your much. family hi and. Just thank you. Thank you for spending time with us tonight. Yeah, thank you guys. I really enjoyed this. Good. Yeah.